Hello, good afternoon. This is the election brief with me, Arab Kumsin. This afternoon, NDC withdraws request for the Supreme Court to rule that the Electoral Commission does not have the power to compile a new voter's register. The court has set June 23rd for judgment. We bring you details of the court's proceedings. Also, national organizer of the New Patriotic Party, Sami Ewuku, admits the party hierarchy may have delayed in engaging aspirants in the MPB primaries who harbor grievances. I will also agree with you that maybe sometimes uh, the process delays. So when the engagement process, uh, people feel that they are not being talked to early. That is when it brings about this. But and later, the politics of curses is creeping into the political narrative in the lead up to an election set to be a cliffhanger. Vegetative ill wishes, all cooked and wrapped in dangerous cocktails. <laughs> Then, 11 months ago, a group claiming to be NDC supporters also invoked cases on Electoral Commissioner Jin Mensah. <laughs> I promise you, you would want to stay for this piece. This is your election headquarters. Thanks for staying with us. We start off with the National Democratic Congress, which has today withdrawn its request for uh, the Supreme Court to rule that the Electoral Commission does not have the power to compile a new voters register. This was after the court had asked the party to make a choice on which of its reliefs it wants to pursue. While uh, the lawyer for the party, Godwin Eduji Tamaklo, had wanted to confer with the party, the panel reminded him that as a lawyer in the case, he can decide what question the court answers. He opted to withdraw the request seeking to bar the EC from compiling a new register and instead pursue the exclusion of the voter's ID card as proof of identity. Well, the court then asked the lawyers to address it orally. Joseph Akaple was in court for Joy News. The opposition NDC in its case in the court had made the point that the Electoral Commission does not have the power to compile a new register. They also make the point that should the court even rule that the Electoral Commission can compile a new voter's register, uh, the EC should allow persons who intend to use their existing voter's ID card as proof of identification that they are citizens and they are of 18 years of age should be allowed to use those cards to get onto the electoral roll. The court first asked the lawyers for the NDC to elect uh, one of the reliefs and pursue it instead of pursuing the combined relief of asking for a declaration that the AC cannot compile a register and also asking that it is unconstitutional to exclude the voter's ID card. Uh, the NDC's lawyers, led by Godwin Tamaklo, opted uh, to uh, abandon the course relating to uh, challenging the powers of the AC to compile a new register and rather to make the point that uh, the AC uh, should allow others who have the current voter's ID card to take part in the registration exercise. The court then proceeded to hear legal arguments from from the parties in the case. Uh, Deputy Attorney General Godfrey Debo Adami told the court that uh, the EC should be allowed to correct its own error since it has admitted that indeed it allowed persons and trained its officials not to obey CI 72. Uh, that he said is evidence that indeed persons who are with their cards, some of whom acquired it through ways which cannot be trusted and that should be evidence that the court should take note of. Uh, the NDC insists that uh, no evidence has been shown that indeed individuals who are not supposed to be on the electoral roll are on the roll and so they cannot proceed to say that they shouldn't use the voters register. After listening to the arguments, uh, the court adjourned proceedings to June 23 to deliver its judgment, seven days before the EC uh, has slated to carry out its compilation of a new voters register. Reporting for joining us on the law court complex, my name is Joseph Akable.
Now, as you know, the Supreme Court on June 4th gave the EC up until June 8th to justify its stance. The commission has complied, raising six legal issues uh, to attempt to get the court to agree with it. Now, former Deputy Communications Minister Felix Kwachiofosu has accused Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Balmia of defiling the office of the Vice President. He says the NDC flag bearer, John Dramani Mahama, will soon select a running mate who will restore what he calls the dignity of the office of the Vice President. I mean, when the government of the day focuses more on triviality and consistently ask completely needless questions about who the running mate of the position. You know that is not a serious government. A serious government would at this time be engaging the people and rendering account of its stewardship and showing how they have enhanced the livelihoods of the people and go forward to even outline other measures that they are going to adopt to better the living conditions of the people. They will not be asking about who the running mate of, of the NDC. Now, who the running mate of the NDC is does not in any way impact the ability of this government to deliver on its promises. As I speak to you, they have been an appalling failure. Only last week, at the same program that we are at today, the Honorable Majority Chief Whip, uh, Elijah Muntaka, showed that, for instance, when it comes to the one million per constituency promise, a paltry 9% of the $825 million that should have gone to the constituencies has been released. Exactly how does knowing who the running mate of the NDC is make sure that this promise is fulfilled. So I think that you in the media too should help. You should hold them to stricter standards than this one. Low-level communicators within the MPP can engage in that discourse. But you don't expect government officials and the president and the vice president and people who should have more work on their table to do to engage in that kind of conversation. So President Mama is unmoved by discussions that are not helpful in that regard. We have our roadmap, we have our timetable, we've done this before. Mind you, we have won four out of seven elections. And it says a lot about our ability to do what it takes to win elections. So when the time is appropriate, President Mama will announce who is running mates. And it will be a choice that will reflect the mood of the country. And that running mate will restore seriousness, which at the moment is missing in the vice presidency. No, President Mama is not in the business of appointing somebody to match Bahomia. The vice president's office is a place for sobriety and reflection. When the vice president speaks, it should evoke seriousness. When the vice president speaks, it should reflect a certain direction. We don't want a Rottweiler to be vice president. The vice president's office is not a place for an attack dog. It is a place for someone who partners the president to deliver the goods. So I'm surprised that people think that Dr. Bahamia is a gold standard for vice presidency. He is not. I have kind of... The MPP has a plethora of communicators whose duty it is to engage in sloganeering and name calling and cut calls. But you don't expect the vice president to engage in that kind of conduct. So President Mama will choose someone who will restore dignity, who will restore level headedness, sobriety, and reflection, and above all, a capacity to deliver on the goods to ensure that the people of Ghana benefit from the governance that President Mama will roll out. From the NDC, let's move to the MPP now. And the national organizer of the governing party, Sami Uku, has admitted the party hierarchy may have delayed in engaging aspirants in the MPP primaries who harbor grievances. He was, however, quick to add that they did not know the intention of these aspirants who were disqualified from the race. The run-up to the MPP parliamentary primary scheduled for June 20, uh, which is just next week Saturday, has seen some agitations in some communities where delegates claim their preferred aspirants are being forced out of the race to favor sitting MPs. While speaking on Prime Morning on Joy Prime TV, Mr. Uku explained the party processes may have dragged. The National Executive Committee for the Avoidance of Doubt is made up of the president himself, the vice president, the former president, um, the national, the elected national officers of our party, and their deputies as well, all regional chairmen of our party. Um, again, uh, some rest from uh, the parliamentary party as well, uh, former general secretaries, former chairmen, uh, rank and uh, chairpersons of committees of parliament when we are in government or ranking members as well. So uh, quite a distinguished body uh, of very level-headed uh, men and women. So I don't think there's a problem with the profession. Uh, however, I will also agree with you that maybe sometimes uh, the process delays 
So when the engagement process, uh, people feel that they are not being talked to early, that is when it brings about this. But of course, you may also not know people's intent or intention until they pick a form to contest. Mm. And then they subject themselves to the electoral process, uh, that's the vetting uh, and then the appeal process. Mr. Oku says the party hierarchy is engaging all disgruntled candidates to resolve the outstanding issues. Continue to engage uh, um, a group parliamentary aspirants uh, uh, behind the scenes. Uh, we've had several issues in the Doma Central constituency, in the, in the driving constituency, in that of the Asoka constituency, Tanzania um, uh, Asoka itself, uh, offensive side. So, it's an ongoing process. Um, these are difficult times for us as party leaders, but we cannot share responsibility. And that is why we've decided to hit the ground, engage our people so sanity can prevail. So we keep talking to them. Some voluntarily have decided that uh, they will withdraw from the race and also throw their support behind their, uh, behind their other colleagues. Some are also uh, having uh, to think through it's a political party. Right. We, we won't always take decisions that will be palatable to everybody. Right. But sometimes, even though the medicine is bitter, uh, it is necessary to take decisions. to the northern region because some aggrieved youth of the NPP in the Gushegu constituency have petitioned the National Executive Committee not to reinstate Mahama Osman as an aspiring parliamentary candidate for the Gushegu electoral area. The Regional Parliamentary Vetting Committee disqualified Mr. Osman during the party's vetting, uh, citing he was still holding himself as constituency organizer. Mr. Mahama appealed against the disqualification, but the youth believe he has not got the clout to win the Gushegu seat. Addressing a press conference in Gushegu in the northern region, spokesperson of the youth, Idrisu Abdul Wadud, said, They, the youth, insist that disqualification of Mr. Osman should be maintained and he not allowed to contest in the primaries. He warned that the party will suffer a humiliating defeat in the December polls if NEC fails to reverse its decision. We, the undersigned bona fide members of the new patriotic party in the Gushegu constituency, wish to petition against the National Executive Committee, Committee's decision to reinstate Mr. Mahama Osman as an aspiring parliamentary candidate to contest in the June 20th parliamentary primaries. Mr. Osman was disqualified by the National Parliamentary Vetting Committee on the grounds of his violation of Rule 6 of the rules and regulations of parliamentary primaries published by the General Secretary of the party. For the avoidance of doubt, Rule 16 states emphatically that, subject to Rule 15 above, persons holding positions as national, regional, or constituency executives who wish to contest in the primaries shall recuse themselves from their current positions through the selection or election process until the primary the parliamentary primaries are over the general secretary of the party stated at a press conference at which he outlined the guidelines that any aspiring presidential or parliamentary candidate who flout any of the above guidelines and modalities shall be deemed to have breached Article 47 of the MPP Constitution and will accordingly be sanctioned, including being disqualified from the contest. Mr. Osman is the constituency organizer of the party in Gushegu constituency. He confessed at his vetting by the National Parliamentary Vetting Committee in Tamale that he has not recused himself from office as constituency organizer. The spirit of Rule 15 and 16 of the guidelines for the presidential and parliamentary primaries is to ensure a free and fair elections. Mr. Wadu said only Dr. Ziblim Idi can win the seat for the Gushegu constituency. 
Only Dr. Edi can win the seats for MPP. We appeal to the party leadership to save the party for the constituents. If National Executive Council fails to reverse their decision and insist in organizing primaries in the Gushegu constituency, then the party should be ready for a humiliating defeat in the December 2020 elections. Sure. He also appealed to the party to convince. He also appealed to the party to convince the sitting MP, Dr. Ziblim Idi, to resent his decision and contest the election. Let's head to the western region now where the Upper Disco Traditional Council in the Ahanta West Municipality on Tuesday performed rituals asking their gods to deal ruthlessly with some NPP stalwarts and the MP for the area, Kujukum. They accused the MP of hurling insults at the paramount chief of Upper Disco, Obrimpong Hima Dechi the 14th, and the chiefs of Ahanta during a WhatsApp chat by the MP and his supporters. and black war apparel, 48 chiefs from 48 communities under the leadership of the Upper Discov chief, Abrempon Hima de Chidi 14th, chanted war songs, holding bottles of snaps and a white ram in a procession towards the Upper Discov palace, looking furious. They called on the paramount chief to formally inform him of some unprintable words in audio used on the paramountcy by the MP and his cohorts, including the NPP second vice chairman of the Ahanta West constituency. Politicians came to meet traditional leaders. So those who have treated our mighty stool with impunity should face the wrath of our stools if they step on our land. So what the one see the men sassing the Arado, they will quiet campaign. I am one of my Osama. He might the Chief Wakasano and then Fuma, Nguanka Krama was an assassin in Arano, one for one in young one. The chiefs, who performed several rituals from morning to midnight on Tuesday, say the MP, together with her supporters, will all face the wrath of the gods if they make any attempt to step on any land belonging to the upper disc of Paramoncy. It's serious, especially we are hunters. The politician doesn't respect us. The hunter queen mothers and kids, they don't respect us. Because we can't go to Asantehene and say whatever you want and then leave. You won't even can, come back, get back. But the way people, uh, I don't, I don't know how, how to do it, know how to say it. The way people underestimate us, we have to put a stop to that. That they don't want, we don't want them to come here. You can't come and abuse our paramount chief and later you come and do your politics. That one, we allow it. They have derogated our stool, the big stool of Ihmadechi, and a hunter land as a whole. The word they use, in fact, they have even insulted a hunter here for two four bedrooms. For them to say, a hunter in court, a hunter I am for. So when I am Jurubogoma, so when I am Kasa. It means they have insulted all the chiefs on a hunter land. Humadechi stool have 48 communities under it. And what we are saying is that if they don't come and appease the gods, the stool, the big stool, they shouldn't step foot on any of these communities to make campaign. Else, our gods will deal with them. So we feel slighted if a certain member of parliament for Ahanta West 
constituency together with, with his apaches insult us we feel very slighted and we are not going to take kindly to these type of insults but the school is the embodiment of the spirit and the soul of each one of us here so for us to sit down and allow you to denigrate the stool, it shall never happen. So we are going to deal ruthlessly with Honorable Kujokun and his party apparatchiks, especially those on the platform that insulted us. We are saying to Honorable Kujokun and his party apparatchiks not to set foot onto any of the communities so mentioned. If they refuse, and they disobey our orders. We shall invoke the spirit of our ancestors. They issued a two-week ultimatum to the MP and his boys to render an unqualified apology or blame themselves for consequences that will follow should they step into any of the 48 communities in Upper Discov. In Athalia Kwansa, Joy News, Discov. So it appears the politics of curses is creeping into the narrative in the lead up to the election, which is set to be a cliffhanger. While the very recent incident involved some MPP supporters who invoked curses on the national executive for disqualifying some candidates or some aspirants in the upcoming primary, Georgia Kovina throws the spotlight on this phenomenon. This development caught the attention of the MPP national leadership and they threatened suspension of people who invoked cases. The conduct of some members claiming to be invoking cases on the party leadership and in particular on members of the National Executive Committee on allegations that their preferred candidate have been disqualified by NEC from contesting the primaries. We are completely appalled by such gross misconduct. Some of the youth believed that it was the way to go. And I think that in moments like this, emotions do flare up. And I, I think that it is one of those, those um, moments when there was an overflow of emotions. That's how come they resorted to the abandon of ties and the rest. With the political system. If they are not doing the right thing, we will still test them. That's my opinion one. We will still test them because we vote them to go, to, to, to do our, our need. We don't vote them to go and sit down and sit down in the lousy cars and be happy of no, no. And you come to our area and tell us that, oh, if I vote for you, you vote for me, I'll do this, I'll do this, and we'll face the same one. If they don't change their attitude, we'll stick as them. And in police, every, this one says this, that one says that, but still people are not really getting results. People are, people are still wallowing in poverty. That's why they are resorting to all these cases, you know. But between still some fear in them, you could, that's why they are coming out like this. People are fed up. People resort to cases instead of dialoguing. So change your attitude and we won't curse you. That's the admonition from the voters to the politicians. That's our show for today. I'm Marble Crimson. Remember, we come to your screens every weekdays from Mondays to Friday at 1.30 to 2 p.m. My name is Arbo Crimson.